Hello and welcome to the Tinker Cards video gallery. Today I'm back again with another video for the spotlight feature over at the Stumplerations blog. And as promised, I'll do something inspired by Snowdrop. Now, you might have been wondering who or what Snowdrop is. Snowdrop is one of the Mersey ferries that crosses the Mersey between Liverpool and Birkenhead. And it recently got a makeover by Sir Peter Blake, a pop art artist. And um, I will be putting a link to the actual article that I read about it uh, on my blog, on the Tinker Cards blog. Um, but now I'll just be focusing on the card. I'll also have a little um, feature on what I did as uh, preparation work. So before I even started with this year, I was initially intending to blend all of this eyes. I started off with a grid pattern and thinking what would I want to go with there. So it does take a little bit of prep work. And then I marked it out with a little pencil line, with pencil lines, and then I coloured it in. And as I already said, initially I wanted to use inks to blend it, but I'm running a bit short of time, so I just used some pro markers. Uh, to colour it in and I might chop it uh, a bit further down to size. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. And so basically I will be stamping some images on here. Some I'll, I'll stamp, others I'll emboss. Right, so let's get started. Now I got a bit of a chevron here. I'm working with the chevron and arrow set. I'm working with the uh, retro modern shapes and also the mixed media grunge set. So I've got some chevrons here from the um, chevron and arrow set and I'm just going to stamp them using some black versa colour ink. And I might just sprinkle it then with just before I even start stamping. Just let me do this to swipe it a little bit because I probably sprinkle it all with embossing powder once I've done my black stamping to emboss that and then um, I'll emboss other colours as well. But let's just start with this here. So I did measure up all the way I wanted things to go. So I'm really hoping that. Um, my stamps fit quite nicely into the gaps as I thought they would. So here I just thought I'd do a bit of masking. So this is another one from the Chef on an Arrow set and I only wanted to stamp half on, on there. So I'll be guided by this here. That can come off. So you got this. I'm thinking shall I just... No, I'll leave it as, as is there. Um, then I wanted another little black one. And I might really just stamp or uh, sprinkle it with embossing powder in between and uh, to get that set. Let's do one of these. And let's do this here as well. Just need to be careful with this. I always tend to pick up ink in the centre with these little stumps and of course it's happened. I don't want that to come on. Let's just see what happens. There we go. Let's give that a quick wipe. And let's take these off for the moment. And I'm going to now get one from the grunge set. From the mixed media grunge. 
and I'm going to pop that on here. Just see, I've got actually little drawings on the reverse side of what I wanted to go somewhere. Yeah, let's just stamp. Oh, this was going to go there. Let's just mask this off just in case I'm here. And I wanted that to go out that way. There we go. And then we also got some pointing upwards. I probably will have to mask off as well because I don't think I had the, my intention was to have them going quite as long. Was going to do them about like this. There we go. And let's just sprinkle them with a little bit of embossing powder at the moment. I can always go back and do other bits. It's actually got uh, more like a grey one which isn't entirely black. Such as that might give quite a good look to it. So let's just dump that down. Oh, this is where I was hoping that it would work. What is happening? seem to be having loads of embossing powder on there so this is why I got my brush and I'm brushing it all off oh no what am I doing this is when I'm in a hurry and I always get things a bit messed up so let's just do a little bit it's always quite good when you work with embossing powder to have a brush to hand sometimes can just help a little bit with the sort of static areas even though I wiped it with my embossing body it didn't seem to have um, taken enough of the static off it could be because my areas might be still a little bit damp from the um, colouring in actually but I've got to get this this done so I'm going to heat this up now bear with me Oh, this is interesting. It's called gunmetal and it looks almost black, but it's actually a sort of silvery colour. So I quite like this. And I shall be doing a bit more stamping in black, but I'll do that at the end. Um, so that would just be another nice contrast. So I'm just getting my embossing powder off. Because um, I'll be doing more embossing, but I'll be going over to uh, white and red now. I just wanted to get started with these little ones uh, 
the ones that I just remembered best uh, after where I wanted the stamps to go. So let's get my gunmetal one out of the way. Well, chips are made of metal. Let's do that. Yeah, it's caught a little bit, but it's actually, it's, it's okay. It's not too bad. Right, so where am I going next? Uh, oops. Let's get this on. I wanted to do some waves and they were going to be done in white and in red. So I've got white and my red embossing powder there. So I mean, as I said, uh, the trick with this one here is really is about the preparation and um, sort of drawing your lines and then colouring in. If I had I done it with um, yeah, had had I done it with my blend with my inks I would have needed to mask all the little squares off sort of one at a time and um, take it from there so I'm just going to do this and I need another one to go here And that would be the bits that are going to be sprinkled with red. That is one. Let's get that off for the moment. And let's put my red embossing powder on. Okay, I thought I might do another red one here. So the question is, what do I want to go there? I don't think I had any um, very strong ideas as to what that was going to be. So I think I might just use a little sort of square from the retro mod shapes and just eyeball it a little as to where I stamp it because that is one that I sort of wanted to fade out towards the edge so that's okay I know I've done that that's why I'm going to put that on and then next I had another stamp I wanted to use. This time again with the red. I mean, if you have a look at the uh, picture that is in the article to which I will have the link on my uh, Tinker Cards blog, that's tinkercards.blogspot.co.uk, you actually see that there's quite a bit of a pattern uh, that is yellow and red on the actual chip. So that was a an idea I got from there basically to do the. yellow and red combination and when I was planning this card I sort of like so how am I best going to do this and the idea came up to get plenty of embossing powder because when you with embossing powder you don't really see what is underneath so it makes the colouring and everything easier So in other words, you can emboss over a strong colour and you won't see the strong colour underneath. 
So where is my brush gone? Here we go. So there we got these. And let me get this out of the way. Yeah, I was quite lucky because when I went to the um, Stampers Fair in Pots and Light the other week, um, I was able to buy loads of different colours of embossing powder, which is quite nice. And I think I really would want to show them off in this sort of context. So that's, that's making my day a bit. Right. Oops, sorry, I've just seen there is again quite a lot of colour that has a sort of, um, yeah, that's better. That was a sort of stuck to the cart still. So we got that. Um, now what's next? I was going to do some more waves, wanting to emboss them in white down here. So let me get the waves out. Mm. And my watermark ink. And let's see this. And this. So this is really a lot of a a card where you need to mask quite a bit of, um, yeah, quite quite a bit of, just simply so you get, you can um, stamp where you need to go, and you're not getting into another um, square, rectangle, whatever you want to call it, because it's a bit mixed. So I'm just going to give that a blast and um, then I think I'll have to do a little bit of yellow as well. So I just need a bit of yellow embossing powder for up there, so I um, can't quite remember what I wanted to go in there, but something will go in there, of course. And you probably can see it's already, it's starting to come together and the whole thing is about having loads of patterns and so, it's a bit directionless, um, but loads of patterns to distract the eye as to from where to go, really. And right, okay. Where is... I got a circle that I wanted to do there. 
Now I thought I had that out, but I haven't as yet. Yep, got that one here. Right, and my yellow embossing powder. It does look yellow, it could be gold, but let's just go for it, I think. Hmm. Okay. actually quite nice. I haven't tried that before. It looks a bit more orange rather than um, gold or yellow but it sort of looks, shines through on the background. Okay so I'm just going to get these now out of the way and I think what I'll be doing now is just some uh, black stamping to tie in with the rest. And then I'll see what it will look like and I might cut it down and then layer it on a black base card. So let's just see what's happening next. So I've got that. Um, Another one. Yep. Okay, so So just to recap, um, what I did to start here is I really measured out uh, my stamps, the widths and approximately the lengths that I wanted to stamp them at. And then I sort of drew um, a grid line with light pencil marks. Is that? I'm sorry. Oh, I got the wrong one. I picked up the wrong stamp. I meant to pick up the smaller one. Apologies. I thought there was something not quite what it should be like. Let's pop that on here. It's that one I want because that fits where I want it to go. Just goes in here. Um, yep. Just pop that. To one side and then it's this here. I mean, you could, if you wanted to do a big 
um, sheet and just take it from there. So that's like a, a master board that you cut down and use it like that. I'm sort of just checking again what was it that I had on the reverse as like little pointers what I wanted to go where. Just see, I'm just going to use I'm going to use these again, they're quite good. Just going to stamp some actually coming in. And I'll do that here. And I wanted something there. Yeah, I'll just do those. And then that's that's me done. And I think I really, I will cut. The edges down. And just see how. Uh, let's do that as well. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll just cut the edges down, and I might even cut it in down into a, a few other bits, and just see what uh, I come up with for cards. But it's really just sort of um, using some stamps in a different way, and create something quite funky with them. So that was the idea. Do this here. I'm sorry, I'm not uh, sort of like very talkative right now because I'm probably thinking a bit too much. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. So I'll probably cut something out of this and uh, then use it for cards. And I can always use like a little uh, sort of pattern from it, a uh, partial shape, whatever. Well, um, the ready-made card will be on the Stamplerations blog, which is stamplerations.blogspot.com and it will also be on my Tinker Cards blog, which is tinkercards.blogspot.co.uk. Well, thank you for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed it and just got a bit of an idea, even if you didn't uh, watch the whole. I haven't figured out how to fast forward anything yet. Um, I really don't know how to edit a video, quite frankly. So, hence, I'm not even getting into, into that sort of thing at the moment. Uh, when it comes to online stuff, I'm pretty much self-taught, and that's all I can say. Sometimes work just takes over, and I haven't got the time to do anything else. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and have a lovely day, and I shall be back soon. Thanks, bye.